Okay, this is a problem that was um, done uh, in class, but uh, I'm going to uh, solve it now uh, using uh, special points. Uh, the first thing that you want to do for special points is to identify the number of rotating bodies. In this particular case, uh, there are two uh, rotating bodies. Um, well, I guess first you want to make sure that uh, you don't need a free body diagram. So uh, it's not a dead giveaway um, and so because it's asking for accelerations, not forces. So you have to count the degree of freedom. In this particular case, it's one degree of freedom. Uh, which means if you give me one velocity, I can find any velocity. Uh, if you give me one acceleration, I can find any acceleration. Uh, you, that's what you give me. You give me one V and you give me one A. Uh, and so therefore I can calculate any, um, any velocity that I want uh, and any um, uh, acceleration. So I can find the velocity and the acceleration of anything I want. So there's not a need for a free body diagram. Okay. Step one on special points is identify the rotating bodies. This body here is rotating. I'm going to call it body number one. This body over here is also rotating. So there are two rotating bodies. The next uh, step is to identify the special points. The special points are D right here. Uh, it's special because you know something about it. It's in permanent contact with the ground. So therefore the table says that point D on the rotating body has the same velocity and acceleration as the, the uh, ground. So that's something that you know. Also, that red dot is uh, on the ground and it's also on the, on the body too. So that makes it special. Point B is special because he's on the rotating body and he's also on that translating body. Um, and uh, all points uh, on this translating body, all of these, have the same velocity and acceleration, so they all have V and A. Uh, so you know what the velocity and acceleration of B is. It's uh, equal to V and A. Uh, also, it's special because it's touching more than one body. Uh, point C is the only other special point down here. It's special because it's touching two bodies. Okay, so um, on body one, there happens to be two special points, B and C, and so therefore I'm going to expect one special point equation. Uh, body two has two special points, uh, C and D, therefore I'm expecting to find um, one special point equation for that one. Okay, as usual, I'm going to set up a coordinate system. So here is the I direction, and the J direction is this way. Um, you can pretty much pick those arbitrarily, but once you do, you have to choose the third direction to be a right-hand rule. So this guy is uh, the K direction right here. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, let's write the special point equations. So I'm going to do between C and D. So I'm going to write velocity of C. I just put a bar over it just to remind me that it's a vector. Velocity of C equals the velocity of D. It's arbitrary whether you choose to start with C or D. Uh, you could have written it velocity of D equals velocity of C plus uh, some terms. So that's, that part's uh, somewhat uh, arbitrary. Uh, plus, and this is the angular velocity of the body they share, crossed with uh, the R. Now, once you've decided which one goes first over here, the C or the D, this one has to go from the D to the C. It always goes from the guy on the right-hand side to the guy on the left-hand side, always. Plus, there's a V-REL term, possibly. Uh, <clears throat> the V-RELs will be zero if the two points you're writing uh, the equation for happen to be a fixed distance apart. So if you look at C and D, when, when the body two rotates, C and D never get further apart or closer together, so therefore these terms are all zero. Okay, while we're at it, we will also write uh, one uh, special point equation for body one, and that's between B and C. Okay, it doesn't matter whether you start with B or C. I'm going to start with C, and I'll show you why uh, in a little bit. Velocity of C is equal to the velocity of B plus omega of the body they share 
they're sharing body one, B and C are on body one. Uh, incidentally, up here, the omega is uh, the body that C and D are sharing, and that's body number two. Okay, cross R, and this one's going to go, has to go from the right hand guy, B, over to the left guy, C. Has to be that way. And are there any VRELs for this? No, there are no VRELs because B and C are a fixed distance apart. Okay. Now let's try to plug in some numbers uh, of what we know. All right. Uh, by the way, the reason I wrote it uh, with C on the left hand side for both of them is that these two are exactly the same. And that means then the uh, equation on the right hand side will equal the equation on the right hand side over here. So in other words, I can take the two blue equations and set them equal to each other and I can get rid of the VC. I don't, I don't need it. I don't care about it. I can eliminate it. So that's why I wrote it the way I did. But you'll get the same answer, just maybe a little bit more algebra. Okay, let's plug numbers in for what I know. So the velocity of D, well, according to the table, this is permanent contact relative to the uh, permanent contact with the ground. So velocity of D is the same as the velocity of the ground, which is zero. So the first blue equation is zero equals, oops, excuse me, zero plus omega two. Okay, so omega two, it's uh, the angular velocity of body two is simple. All two-dimensional problems have simple angular velocity. That means that the omega of 2 is equal to a change in an angle. Well, here's an angle right here, right? You paint, paint a line on the... You paint a line on the ground. You paint a... You paint a line on the ground. You paint a line on the body. You measure the angle, which is theta. The change in that angle is equal to the angular velocity. Now, the only other problem I have is I've got to determine what direction it is. So what you do is you imagine that theta is getting bigger, right? Theta dot is positive. If theta is getting bigger, this, this link is rotating counterclockwise counterclockwise is in the positive k, so this is going to be theta dot in the positive k. While we're at it, let's get the angular velocity of body 1. Body 1 has a simple angular velocity. All two-dimensional bodies have that. So here is paint a line on the ground and a line on the body. Measure the angle. The change in the angle is the angular velocity. Now get the direction. If theta is getting bigger, if theta is getting bigger, this link is going clockwise, which means it's in the negative k. Okay, so I have the angular velocities. Okay, omega 2. Omega 2, according to what I've already done, is theta dot k crossed with R from D to C. So I'm looking for an R that goes from the D uh, point to the C point. Uh, I'm going to put everything in meters. So I'm going to, if I'm going to go from D to C, I'm going to go a distance over to here. And that distance right there is equal to 0.3 times the cosine of the angle theta. So that would be 0.3 cosine of theta. And that is walking uh, from D to C, that's going left. So that will be that distance in the negative I direction. Then I'm going to go a distance here. That distance is equal to 0.3 times the sine of the angle theta. And, uh, and I'm going down, which is down is minus j. Okay, so that's the first uh, equation. Uh, the, the next one, uh, this is velocity of c, right? Velocity of c equals. So the next one, velocity of c equals. 
velocity of b. Okay, b is on the uh, non-rotating bar. If a, if a link is not rotating, uh, all of the uh, velocities and accelerations are the same. For example, you could say the velocity of b is equal to the velocity of a plus omega of the, of the uh, call this body 3, omega of body 3 cross r from a to b. The rel terms are equal to 0. because a and b are not getting further apart. Okay, velocity of a, I know, is, okay, well, the angular velocity of this body is zero. It's not rotating. So what that tells you is the velocity of b equals velocity of a. All points on a non-rotating body have the same velocities and the same accelerations. So what's the velocity of b? The velocity of b is equal to this little v, and it's going left. So that's the velocity of b. Um, the angular velocity 1 is a negative theta dot k. Crossed with, and then the r from uh, b to c has got a horizontal distance. That horizontal distance right there is equal to 0 0.3 cosine theta. And he's going to the right. If you're going from B to C, you're going to go right. So that'd be a plus I. And then you're also going to go down this distance here, which is 0.3 uh, sine theta. And you're going down. That's negative J. Okay. So those are the equations. You want to solve them now. And uh, the easiest thing to do is say, well, the, the top equation uh, says VC equals something, and the bottom one says the same thing, VC equals. So the right-hand side equals the right-hand side. So that would be theta dot K cross minus 0.3 cosine theta minus 0.3 sine theta. equals the bottom one minus v. Okay, to finish this off, um, so uh, that equals minus v i minus theta dot k cross 0.3 cosine theta i minus 0.3 sine theta j. Okay, the next thing that you want to do if you're doing it by hand is to do the cross products. The way I do the cross products is I create a, uh, a little uh, circle that helps me uh, remember things. So I draw it like this, I, J, K, uh, with the circle. This is the positive direction. Okay, then uh, let's do the cross products. I pull all of the constants, all of the numbers out front first, and I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to cross K with the I, and then I'm going to cross K with the J. So I'm going to do them in two pieces. Okay. So I pull out the numbers first. So theta dot times a negative 0.3 cosine theta. Pull all that out. And what I'm left with is k cross i. The way I do k cross i is I start on the on the first vector. So I start with k, and then I cross the i. So I head towards the i in the shortest distance possible. And then I keep going, and I end up at j. And I got there by going in the positive direction. So k cross i is a positive j. You can memorize them if you want to. Okay, let's do the next term. So I pull out the, the numbers. So I have a theta dot, I have a, a negative, a negative 0.3 sine theta, and now I'm left with k cross j. So I start with the k, and then I'm going to do uh, cross j. So I start with the k, I cross j, so I head towards the j, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going.
Start with the K, cross the J, end up at the I. And so the answer is I. And I went in the negative direction. Let me put that guy back in. This is the positive direction. I went backwards. So that's a negative, uh, negative right there. Okay, so let's do the cross products on the, on the right hand side. So I have a minus V I, uh, and then I've got a, a, a minus theta dot 0.3 cosine of theta. K cross I is a positive J. And then I have a minus minus is a plus. Um, theta dot 0.3 sine theta. And I'm left with K cross J. K cross J is a negative I. So that becomes a negative I. Now to extract the equations that you need, uh, you, you take all of the i's on the left hand side equal to the i's on the right, the j's on the left equal the j's on the right. So on the left hand side, I have a positive 0.3 sine theta, theta dot in the i. And then over here on the right hand side, I have a negative v, and I have a minus 0.3 sine theta, theta dot. And then on the j's on the left, I have a negative 0.3 cosine of theta uh, times theta dot. And on the right-hand side, I have a negative 0.3 theta dot cosine of theta. Okay, uh, and so that you get two equations. For each vector equation, you end up with two uh, scalar equations. So here the here are the two scalar equations. The, the last equation, uh, this one here, um, it, it comes out to be, you know, when you solve it, it comes out to be 0 equals 0. It's correct, it just doesn't do you any good. And so the top equation uh, has, um, uh, let's see, I'm solving for theta dot, so that would be 0 0.6 sine of theta times theta dot is equal to a negative v. So theta dot is equal to a minus v divided by 0.6 sine of theta. So what you do is you tell me this theta dot, theta dot equals. So if you tell me the angle theta where you want it, uh, I can then you know, uh, calculate the, uh, the uh, uh, angular velocity. Now, if you notice, um, it says that theta dot is a negative number, right? Because v is a positive number. So theta dot's negative. Uh, a negative uh, derivative means that the angle is getting smaller. And so it kind of makes sense. If you pull this uh, point A, if you pull it, these things tend to flatten out. So the angle here should be getting smaller. And so that's what it says here. Theta dot equals a, a negative number. Okay, so... Uh, I'll pause it now. The next thing I'll do is the, exactly the same thing with uh, finding the accelerations.